Hello, this is Jeff Ray, the prototographer for Steeped in Light Photography. And I've got a special video that I've been teasing for some time now. This is an early prototype of what I'm referring to as, and we are internally as, Project Cyclops. Uh, it had other nicknames along the way, and I may share those with you, assuming that the original copyright holders don't come after us. <laughs> this is a contentious period. But uh, given that, I wanted to share this with you guys because it's very special to me. It's something that I've been working on for some time. And uh, basically, since the DJI Osmo Pocket first became available, I did not receive any advance on it, unlike some of the guys on YouTube who have been fortunate in uh, being able to get a pre-release unit uh, prior to original release. I received mine on the same day that everybody else did uh, in the general public, so I've had it for that length of time approximately three weeks now. And I've been working with it, kind of trying to expand its capabilities and to try to make it a little more useful for some of the things I'm going to be doing uh, while we wait patiently for DJI to roll out the remaining accessories for this exciting unit. What I've done with Project Cyclops, and this is the big reveal right here, guys, and you may have seen him hiding in the background in a couple of recent videos. I'm now going to present him in all of his full glory. Ignore that name on the front. We're going to be changing that out later. But I think you can see and I'll bring it a little closer here, even with all the glare, why I'm so excited. This is a DJI Osmo Pocket in a waterproof enclosure. I'm not going to call it an underwater enclosure, although that's what it is, because the mods that I've made to it, right now I have not had a chance to verify, particularly along this bottom seal, any depth greater right now than about three feet of water for about five minutes. It is completely watertight during that condition. I need to get out uh, into an ocean atmosphere or out into a deeper pool area where I can take it down to 10 to 15 or 20 feet and be able to demonstrate it. But what I want to show in this early pre-release video are the modifications I've made to an existing commercial housing that's very inexpensive, and that's key because remember, here at The Prototographer, we're all about trying to save money as well, but not at the sacrifice of usability, or of safety. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give a first live demonstration of this unit functioning. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to power up the Osmo inside the case. I'm going to demonstrate the screen is functional. You can see it right here. The one major downside to this case design is unfortunately there is a big large button right in the front of where the screen would be, but that actually is useful in certain instances where uh, the unit, uh, the gimbal as an example, becomes locked uh, in an extreme position, which we've probably had happen to us out in the field just using it normally. This allows you to release that gimbal very quickly. The buttons that come here on the side are completely useless. They're designed for the um, original camera that was designed to use with this housing. But what I've done is to add two inexpensive, waterproof, external switches that actually come from an inexpensive GoPro knockoff case that's waterproof down to 60 feet. And I have made the exact modifications required in this case to allow those buttons to function as they should. So as an example, and uh, you'll be able to show, I'll do a cripple, quick triple click here on the right hand button. And you'll be able to see, of course, we move it into the selfie position. Three quick clicks again, and we're back to the normal position there, and you can see that it is completely self-contained. Now, the modifications that have been made, and you can see the gimbal there swinging around as I attempt to move the unit, it really does operate quite beautifully inside this housing. And this is about a 30% smaller housing than the one that will be coming out from DJI when it does. It also doesn't mount from the top at an angle, as does the DJI unit, with a retaining clip to hold it in place, which is the design that they've chosen to use. This actually mounts from the bottom. And I've had to overcome a number of technical and mechanical issues. What I'm going to do in order not to swing this thing around and keep wearing out the gimbal, I'm going to go ahead and do a power down on it here, and you'll see it power down and return to its normal position there. But what I have done along the way is to modify the actual unit itself, not only to be able to very nicely handle this, and it is an incredibly tight fit. It's a good fit, and that's why I love it, because it's incredibly low profile, which gives it a slightly negatively buoyant um, attitude in the water, which I like because without adding additional weight, you're not having to struggle. I can easily modify that so that it can also be slightly positively buoyant so that it will rise to the surface if you're using it for, say, snorkeling and that type of thing. But eventually, I want to be able to use this for deeper dives and other uses. Right now, I'm going to be using it very shortly here for some what I call extreme weather conditions. I'll be able to take this out in the rain. I'll be able to take it out in high winds with no problem. And what really is amazing is it actually captures audio very respectably inside this case. That is a real credit to DJI's engineering. So, 
I'm going to show you very, very briefly uh, some of the aspects of the case. You can see the clip here. Originally, this was a single metal bar that extended all the way across, and that made it impossible for this unit to clear the bottom to be able to open and close it. So what I have done is come up with a two-step technique to allow easy mounting, and I'm going to be showing here for the first time ever. I'm going to be showing how I did some of these modifications. So let's go through some of this with you. Once you have the unit inside the case, of course, obviously it's in its locked position right now, which is not truly locked, but obviously in the position that it would normally mount in its slip-in carry-on case, which I have right here. I'm going to show you essentially the process involved in removing it, and then we'll go through the process of insertion. So you guys can see insertion and removal of this unit. The first thing you do, it's a two-step two system to remove it. The first is what you would always do, which is to release the clip here on the front, and you'll notice that it shows a little yellow indicator when you do, so that you can tell that you're unlocking it, so you don't want to do this obviously in or under the water. You'll pull this clip back, and then, rotating the case over gently, you'll remove each of these pins. Now, I'm eventually going to come up with a pin re retaining clip or something on the side of the unit so we don't lose these pins when you're servicing the unit. But this is what will happen. You'll pull it out, and you can actually leave them in these outer collars right here if you choose to. Once you've done that, this slips off completely, just like so. Once that's slipped off, it allows you to expose the unit itself, and you can see just how tight a fit it is right there against the case. And we can slip the case out, and I'm going to purposely make it so that the gimbal actually fouls. And this is called gimbal fouling. And what that means is that if you look very close, you'll see I can't remove that because if I continue to pull, I'll rip that gimbal right out. So the nice part of this is there's no problem if that occurs. All you have to do is momentarily power up the unit using the same exact switch you normally would. And let me get that done first real quickly for you here. And it'll power up. And then all you have to do is power it down. And once you've done that, the unit will slip right into that position and come right out. So I purposely have fouled it and then removed it, and it happens just that quickly. And you can see the unit, of course, is completely unmodified in any way, shape, or form. It operates and powers up just as it always normally would. You can see my hands there as well, just to prove to you everything's functional and working beautifully. And that's all that you need to do. The only things you have to remember when you use the modified cases, of course, you're not allowed to put in any kind of uh, a connector here for either uh, iOS devices or for a USB-C device because it makes it too high a profile to fit inside the enclosure. It was very important to me that I was able to find an enclosure that, number one, is available so that I don't have to start from scratch, although I can do that. I prefer not to. I am debating whether I'll make this available commercially. It'll depend on a number of things if I can, but I certainly wanted to make this video so that uh, it would be uh, some interesting uh, kinds of things to consider, some foods for thought. And of course, I'm going to be able to shoot some video with this. The other thing I like about this particular case, which is not going to be extant in the initial release of the one from DJI, is the dome. The reason that I'm calling this Project Cyclops is because that dome. Now, what does that do for us? Underwater, that increases our wide angle about 15 to 25%, depending on uh, basically the functions of the camera as you have it set. But it's a dramatic improvement in the angle that you get. As you may recall, when you go underwater, you lose about 33% of your width of the shot because you gain that much as a mag factor going from the refractive index of air to the refractive index of water. And you have to remember that while it's surrounded by water when it's obviously below the surface, it's in air on the inside in order, obviously, for the electronics not to suffer. So as a result, that interface allows us to take advantage of the, of the fact that we have a mag factor built in that we need to essentially compensate for. So this case allows us to do that. DJI's is going to have a flat plane, at least in the initial uh, reviews of it that I've seen in the initial photographs online. I have not been able to get my hands on one yet. I hope to purchase one as soon as it's available so that I can compare these two side by side. But so far, I've been very pleased with the static tests I've done with this case. I have not had a chance yet to get it out in the wild, except for some brief thunderstorms we've had here in the North Texas area. And of course, it's performed flawlessly in that environment. Um, the other thing I've done to the outer surface of this is I've applied, before I go outside, uh, essentially a uh, product, I won't mention it by name, but it's designed to make a slick surface so that water doesn't bead on it, but rather sheets. And the advantage to that is that, of course, it doesn't disrupt the image that I'm trying to record. So that's another thing I've done to this. And it actually lasts through several pretty good soakings, before reapplying it. It's also very inexpensive. It's a spray-on wipe-off solution, and uh, you probably can imagine what it is. Uh, it's also applied to windshields and cars, so that'll give you some idea. This is an acrylic material, so it's very easy to work with, very easy to modify. Uh, I will tell you, you can obviously see this is a prototype because I had a mistake here when I was trying to originally work with it. That's a skitter mark of the tools that were used to originally uh, create these watertight seals here, uh, the holes for that. Uh, sadly, I, I was distracted, unfortunately, and you can see the actual power of 
a very low voltage, very low amperage, very low uh, rotational cycle uh, mill bit and how quickly you can scar the surface on here. So you want to be very, very careful if you're working with this type of material. It's terrific to work with and it's very, very sturdy and does a terrific job. So basically, this is Project Cyclops. I'm also going to now show the insertion. I promise to do that as well. So I'm going to go and place the unit, go and power it up and power it down so that it's in the default position so you guys can see I haven't done anything tricky to it at all. So I've got it powered up now and then I'm going to turn on and power it down. Okay, and now I'm going to insert it into the case. And the way it inserts, you want to be sure, obviously, that your two button sides are up because you need to be able to gain access to that. And all it does, rather than slipping in from the top as you would do with DJI's case, this slips in from the bottom. It slips right on in place. You can see it just inserts just like that. And what I have done in order to make sure I have a good watertight seal and also have easy access to those buttons is I will take the bottom of this case, and I'll typically pull it out just a little bit once I've got it inserted so that I can slip it into the case itself. I've had to cut a notch in the bottom so it's a good tight fit. And then I will make certain, and it's gonna be very difficult here, but I'll try to show it to you, that the bottom of the Osmo Pocket is in conjunction with that dark black pad right there, which is the bumper pad. And the reason that's important is because I want to allow for no obstructions and no uh, potential uh, blockage of that gimbal as it powers up. And so I'll do that, and then we basically do the reverse of what I did before. The first thing that will happen is, we then reinsert the pins, and it does not matter which pin goes in on which side. These are perfectly symmetrical. So I'll insert the pins into the unit here, and you know, I want you to see that. First pin goes in. Let me go ahead and slip that in as so. Same thing on the other side, just like so. And then, turning the case over, clip closes, and we now have it completely ensconced and safely inside the case. I will then gently tap it on the table. This makes certain that I've got it all the way, and I think you can see that. I'm going to show that to you right here. You can actually see if I can avoid the glare here, and I apologize for that. The bottom of that Osmo pocket, which is that dark line you see right there, is in conjunction with that black pad that you can barely make out right there. And why is that important? Because once we've done that, the magic then can occur when we power the unit up. And there we are. The unit is now powered up, operational. You'll see it comes back there. You can see the display. I'll put my hand in front of it so you can see my hands in front of it there. And you can see that on the screen as well. And as I said, this has been water tested down to a depth of a little over, well, I've actually gone down to three feet with it um, for a couple of minutes just to be certain. I don't want to lose my Osmo Pocket, obviously. And I'm going to be doing some modifications on a second version of this that I have received uh, at my destination that I'll be visiting, uh, where I'll be doing the same mods to it. And I want to be able to actually coordinate those modifications now into a very clean design, avoiding some of these, uh, you can see some of the tooling marks here I've made, uh, which were obviously not intentional, but were necessary in order to make the mods to the case to make it work. So now that I know that, the next steps are going to involve making this much more production friendly so that down the road, I may be able to make these available to other folks. Uh, as you can see, and I'm not going to pretend otherwise, uh, this was designed for the Ricoh Theta, which um, doesn't sell particularly well from what I can gather, although I understand it's a very nice unit. It allows you to record uh, 180 degrees from two different cameras that are mounted on the unit, which is not something I'm particularly interested in doing. But it's beautiful for what we want to do here. And I'm really excited to try out that dome when we um, get to our destination to be able to see how well that operates underwater. And you can see I'm just once again going from selfie to distance. So there you go. There's the sneak preek at uh, Project Cyclops. I'll have much more to talk about this later, and along with the modifications that were made specifically to this case. I hope this has been of some interest to you guys. I'm looking forward to the next video as well. Until next time, this is Jeff Ray, the prototographer for Steeped in Light Photography. And remember, as always, it's not what you take, it's what you make. So remember to make it matter and make it yours. Until next time, guys. Great shooting.